Good morning. Um, Feruza just called me. I'm wondering. I'm sorry. I just got out of bed. I might have made a mistake. Is Feruza on with us right now? Good morning. Good afternoon, Mr. Allen. Good good afternoon. Is is it 19 Actually, it's good good evening. Good evening. Good good evening. Yeah. Yep. Good morning here. Is it 1900? Is it 7 p.m. in Irgench right now? Yes. It is 7 p.m. in Irgench. So everybody mm -hmm. was here. But okay. um, uh, just just now they uh, they was leaving because you are not here. Yeah, that's why they left. I'm 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 totally confused by time because it's the last time we connected was two hours later. It's it's only nine o'clock in the morning here, and we huh. Has your time zone did the time zone change? Okay, I'm I'm totally confused now. Hmm. Hi, good morning, Miss Darling. Good morning, Feruza. Yeah, I've I've come. Thank you for the phone call. Um is it comfortable time for you? Or I, you just... well I, I can. I'm just confused because I when we connected two weeks ago in Vermont, it was two hours later than it is now. And I don't know what changed. Yeah, yeah, no, you were in New York. That's why it was time change there. I no, think. no, New York, no, is, no. New York is the same time as Vermont. Oh, uh-huh. So is, is it comfortable time for you? Well, no? yeah, it, it's it's okay. I just feel bad because people. No, no, it's okay. I will just call them now. Uh huh. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's it's comfortable if it's comfortable for all of you. Yeah, I've got things ready to go. Good morning, Mr. Allen. Good morning, Bahram. How are you? How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Yeah, we have a beautiful snowy day in Vermont. We, we've gotten about 10 centimeters of snow in the last day, so it's very pretty. Yeah, we have been having a lot, uh, you know, two cold days nowadays in Uzbekistan. That's what I've heard. I've heard it's been super cold there. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, dangerously cold. I'm glad everyone is okay, but you're back to school now, or does school start on Monday? We have, we have already back, you know, we are, we are in Samarkand. Okay. Samarkand starts earlier than, uh, rather than other schools. Yes. In Uzbekistan. Okay. So Samarkand didn't get the super cold weather? Uh, actually, it's cold, but we, we uh, try to get students into educational section. So that's why we start moving. Yeah. A little bit, uh, you know, Warmer than all the places in Uzbekistan. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. All right. Well, I'm going to give Feruza five minutes or so to get folks online, and I do. I do apologize. I'll have to do a little research and find out what changed because that's confusing me. I usually don't make math mistakes, but I definitely made some kind of mistake. At least I'm not the girl. No, no, it's okay. Mistake. It's natural. It happens. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's uh, thank you for your dedication yeah yeah no you are always ready yeah yeah well good well i'm, I'm glad things are going well i'm just gonna i've got something thank for, you i've got something for joni here that i want to find because mm -hmm. she's okay and let's see yeah okay so we're we're not going to be our most beautiful presentation since we woke up about 20 minutes ago but that's yeah, okay we were having a lazy Saturday morning in Vermont.
but let's see. What we'll do is, and Feruza, how much time do you think I should give for anybody who was on to come back on? Uh, it was uh, 14 people. Yeah, two more minutes. Okay. Two more <sighs> minutes. All right. Yes. And Sultan Mahmoud, are you in the United States right now? Is that what I understood? Good morning. Mr. Good morning. Alan, how are you? I am doing well. How are you doing? Yes, I'm very good. Thanks. And and where are you right now? Uh, nowadays, uh, I'm uh, Indiana State uh, and uh, West Lafayette City, ah. and uh, I'm I'm studying uh, Purdue University uh, yeah. a Computer Engineering Faculty yeah. <coughs> Department also. Yes, uh, uh, some days ago I uh, moved uh, my temporary place, mm -hmm. temporary address. So uh, I wrote to you yesterday or uh, two days ago, but you can't re read my letter. Uh, I wrote you via Telegram. Okay. Uh, yes. All right. Well, let me, I will check. I, I rarely yeah. have time when I'm teaching school to check Telegram. Yeah. So I will. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I, I, I will check because I'd like, I'd like to talk with you about an idea yeah. I have. Yes. Uh, I think you are very busy nowadays. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's yes. okay. We are, we are all busy doing yeah. good work with students. Yes. I'm, I'm very happy. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm glad you're. Sunny. Yes. Yes. I'm. I'm glad you're in Indiana. Do you enjoy the snow? Uh, no. There is uh, some clouded sewers, uh, but uh, some cold maybe. Yep. And uh, sometimes raining time is uh, in this place, but uh, today coldly was uh, yes. Yes. How is your family? How is uh, Joan and? Sasha and your sons also. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you for asking. We are all good. My son is in Colorado. Mac, are, you haven't met Mac or Xander. Mac is going to school at the Air Force Academy, doing well. And Xander is home on a break between classes and starts a whole bunch of college classes soon. And Sasha graduates from high school in five months and is playing a lot of hockey. We have a hockey game this afternoon. So yes, very, very good. <laughs> it's very good. Yep. And Joan yes, is oh, yes. great, great. How yep. she's very uh yeah, sports girl. Yeah. We uh, never uh, have seen girl. hockey here. Yep. Yeah, yeah. All great. Right. Yep. Yeah. So I'm gonna we can start. Yes. yes Thank we, you. We can start. I'm gonna put in the in the chat a, a link to a document. Okay, let me get it there. And this is how Joan's going to start us. So let me get that set. Yeah, let me get my downloads here. It's the thing that I was going to do this morning. There we go. The Mrs. Wright story. All right. So let me get it set up. Get it so that you can see it. Okay. So for our opener today, for our energizer, let me move and get so I so we'll get so you can see Joni here. Good morning. Hi. Hi. Good morning, Hi. Joanne. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, Joan. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> it was a nice wake-up call. 
<laughs> All right. Well, let's let's go ahead and start our session, and you can just pretend that we were on time today. How's that? <laughs> so, yeah. Firuza alarm clock. <laughs> yes. I do apologize. Oh, yeah. Gosh, no. Um. So this activity you'll be able to do with your class, and it's a good, good like listening to English words and being able to do the motions. Um, when you read out loud a story about Mr. and Mrs. Wright. And whenever you hear, and I will challenge you, if you want to show your face, since I'm showing my nice bedhead hair, um, if you click on so we can see some of you, um, it's kind of a fun thing on Zoom or, you know, when we're in here. Um, you're going to do some motions when I read this story. So whenever you hear right or left, we can either, I think well, what we'll do is we'll, you'll hold your hands up or you can lean. So if I say, Mr. Right, then we all go like to the right and then right back to center. Mr. If I say left, you're going to go to the left and then right back to center. So anytime you hear right and left, you're going to react left so has everybody got that yeah i got it let's go <laughs> are you right all right, Everything right? Oh, right all right that's awesome let's shake it out okay so i can't wait to do this it'll be my first time doing a virtual right on activity so anytime you hear right and left today for the rest of the zoom you will have to do or a left so, um, here we go. Mr. and Mrs. Wright story. I'd like to tell you a story about Mr. and Mrs. Wright. One evening, they were baking cookies, and Mr. Wright suddenly called out, Oh, no, there is no flour left. You will need to go out to the store right now. I can't believe you forgot to check the pantry, grumbled Mr. Wright. If only, it will only take 20 minutes if you come right back, go to the corner of 1st and 2nd Street and turn left at the stop sign, then go to 43rd Street and turn right, and then shop will be on your left, declared Mr. Wright as her husband left the house. Mr. Wright found the store and asked the assistant where he could find the flower. The assistant pointed and said, go to the aisle four and turn left. The flower and sugar will be on your left. Mr. Wright made his purchase and walked out right out the door. He turned left, but he couldn't remember where he had left his car. He turned left but he couldn't remember where he left his car. Well, repeat, sorry. <laughs> Suddenly he remembered that he had driven Mrs. Wright's car and that his car was in the driveway at home right where he had left it. He's finally found the right car and opened, it opened the boot and put the flower right inside. Eventually, a wary Mr. Wright found his way home. Mrs. Wright, had been waiting impatiently. I thought you would be right back. And he said, I left all the cookie ingredients on the kitchen counter and the cats got into the milk. You'll just have to go right back to the shop again. Mrs. Wright sighed. He had no energy left. I'm going right to bed, he said, and left Mrs. Wright standing in the kitchen. Welcome to Mrs. and Mrs. Wright's story. So that's <laughs> something you can do with listening to the English word and the English language. And you could even use any word in class that anytime they heard it, they would have to do some kind of reaction to it. Okay. And I just put a link to that story. There's two versions here. Right? In the chat. Okay. And so, and at the end, I'll also give you a link. I'll come back and put a link to an entire document that'll have everything we're going to do today. I, I will admit that I was going to do that in the next hour, so I don't have that document done yet, but I will get it for you. Okay. 
But that's our energizer for the morning. That hopefully that's something that you know could do with classes, could do it live. It's a nice, quick little energizer. So your story today. Here's what I'd like you to think about for your story is I'd like you to think about a student who you just can't engage. Okay, I, I imagine we all have them. I don't need you to put their name in the chat. But in my mind, I'm thinking of a, a young man I have who comes in, sits in class and just does nothing. Anybody have a student like that? <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. All right. Well, I've got a story about a student like that, that I, I, I think is just an interesting story. It's got lots of things. A, it's a, a fun little story that has some, some thinking to it. Um, and so let me share it with you. I'm going to share my screen here. And I think I'll share the whole desktop. Okay, so come here. Glad we got this done. Okay. So let me just check and, and make sure. Are you seeing a screen with a story called The Dot? Can, it, can you give me a thumbs up if you're seeing The Dot? Or thumbs up? All right. Well, this is a, a great story by a, he's actually an artist. Peter Reynolds. And so he um, does some really fascinating work with watercolor and, and writes about art a little bit. So hope you enjoy the story, The Dot. Art class was over, but Vashti sat glued to her chair. Her paper was empty. And let me move that because I think that, are you, okay, yep. Are you seeing the entire screen or is my or am I showing you your pictures back? Can you see the entire can you see the young lady and everything? Yeah, it's visible. Okay, okay yeah. great. Thank you for checking. All right. So art class was over, but Vashti sat glued to her chair. Her paper was empty. Vashti's teacher leaned over the blank paper. Ah, a polar bear in a snowstorm, she said. Very funny, said Vashti. I just can't draw. Her teacher smiled. Just make a mark and see where it takes you. Vashti grabbed a marker and gave the paper a good, strong jab. There, she said. Her teacher picked up the paper and studied it carefully. Hmm. Let me move my up there. She pushed the paper toward Vashti and quietly said, now sign it. Vashti thought for a moment, well, maybe I can't draw, but I can sign my name. The next week when Vashti walked into art class, she was surprised to see what was hanging above her teacher's desk. It was the little dot she had drawn, her dot all framed in swirly gold. Hmm, I can make a better dot than that. She opened her never before used set of watercolors and set to work. Vashti painted and painted a red dot, a purple dot, a yellow dot, a blue dot. The blue mixed with the yellow. She discovered she could make a green dot. Vashti kept experimenting lots of little dots in many colors. If I can make little dots, I can do big dots too. Vashti splashed her colors with a bigger brush on bigger paper to make bigger dots. Vashti even made a dot by not painting a dot. At the school art show a few weeks later, Vashti's many dots made quite a splash. Quite a showing by Vashti at the school art show, eh? 
Vashti noticed a little boy gazing up at her. You're really a great artist. I wish I could draw, he said. I bet you can, said Vashti. Me? No, not me. I can't draw a straight line with a ruler. Vashti smiled. She handed the boy a blank sheet of paper. Show me. The boy's pencil shook as he drew his line. Vashti squared at the boy's squiggle. And then she said, and here I'd like to pause for a second. Because there's exactly one page left in this story. Does anyone have a guess what Vashti said? Can you predict? I'll get a, I'll get a guess. Bafram, what do you think she said? Uh, she may have said that, <clears throat> can you sign at the bottom of this paper? Ah, I love it. All right, let me go back. Share my screen again. A wonderful guess. And there it is. Please sign it. The last page of the story. And the author, Peter Reddles, dedicated this. Okay, And I love the last page, which is his dedication. Dedicated to Mr. Matson, my seventh grade math teacher who dared me to make my mark. All right. So, hope you like the story. If I was doing it in a class, and I'm since I'm doing it with you, my next question would be, what does that story mean to you? If you were to, and I'd love to challenge some of you, I appreciate that numbers of you have been getting on online and talking today. What does that story say to you? Will anybody share? I think the story is about the potential talent of everyone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thanks, Dilfus. I love that. Everyone's potential talent. Yeah. Anybody else? To my mind, to my mind, it's about the teacher and the necessity of the teachers who inspire us, who inspire students to make our marks in this life, to make us change, to do something in order to change. Yeah. I think it's all about teachers. Yes. Yeah. Right on. Uh, yeah. Can I speak? Please. Teach about teachers' great role in the education. Yes. Oh, maybe it's encouraging <laughs> students um, moving out from their comfort zone mm. and make them, uh, make them to do something. Yeah. Even when they are hesitating uh, about themselves, uh, about for example, Vashti, she said that she cannot do anything, she cannot draw anything, but teacher, her teacher encouraged her that, but you can do this, just begin with small step and you can do something big. Maybe it's about this. Oh, that's so well said. Yes, excellent. Yeah, and, and I do hope, I do hope the story is not only inspirational about mm. you're, you're having kids make dots and leave their marks all over mm -hmm. the place, but sometimes we're just one dot away from a student being able to do nothing to finding their great success, and there's always tomorrow to make that dot. So to me, it's a really neat story that just warms my heart, and for certain students, it can be life-changing, and it, it's a fun story to read, so... Yeah, a little different yes, from some of the STEM stories we've um, done, but yeah. Yeah, as Neil yeah. Armstrong said uh, when he landed to the moon, it can be a small leap for a mankind, a man, but it is a great step for mankind. I'm not mistaken, it was like this. It was and this dot. Yeah, giant, this giant dot, step. Giant, yeah, giant step, a giant leap. I cannot remember exactly, but the dot is small um, step for 
watch the but after some time it can be a giant step for in her life maybe this kind of this ah um, Oh, that's so great. You just gave me a Neil Armstrong quote in the morning. That, yeah, that's, that's cool. I like this quote, actually. Yes. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I wanted to I wanted to follow up that story with trying something. I want to try a little poll with you. And so um, what I'm going to do is I've got a poll. We haven't tried this. A, a poll is just a chance to take a vote. And what I'm curious is, I'm going to ask, um, when we were there, and please, I'll start by saying this poll is not meant to make anybody feel guilty. This is information for us. Okay? Because my question is, I'm going to show you a list of the nine books we gave you. And I'm really curious which of these books you've been able to use with your classes. Because I'm curious, it's going to help us learn are there some books that are more useful than others? Maybe there's some things we could do. So I'm going to launch this poll and all nine books will be there. And you can click any, if you've done two of them, click the two that you've done and submit it. If you've done none of them, just submit it. Don't click any of them. If you've done eight of them, click eight. Um, but I'm really curious to see what books we've been able to use so far. Okay. And so, are you seeing a poll? I'm also curious if it works on your phones very well, because I know a lot of you are coming across on phones. That does seem to be working. And it looks like I've got 10 submissions so far. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 of us. Okay. Is that the total? Yep. So I'll give a little bit more time. Um, if anybody can give me feedback, is this is, is this easy to do? Is this hard to do? Is it show up really well, kind of thumbs up, thumbs down. Since we haven't tried it, sometimes technology isn't great. You could drop me a note in the chat too. I see 12 of us so far have submitted. 13. Is there anyone who's not seeing it at all? Okay, I'm seeing a thumbs up. Yep, I'll take that feedback that that's okay, easy to do. Okay. So it didn't come across to everybody. Okay, I've got 15 of us. So in general, we're seeing it, okay. I'm going to wait about another minute that I'm going to share the share the information with you so you can kind of see what I'm seeing because I get to see it in real time. Yep. Okay. So let me end the poll. Thank you for that information. Okay. And so... There you can kind of see it. Um, what the results are showing me is the one that we've done the most is somewhere in the world right now, the measurement book. About two thirds of us have been able to use that one. Um, that's that's a lot more than any of the others because the next one is my perfect pet. Okay, interesting. Those are two very different books. Ones that it looks like are challenging to use are Next Time You See a Sunset and Robots. Okay. Huh. All right. Okay. Yeah, that's great information. Okay. Um, 
just when you look at does does that surprise any of you is is there a particular book on there that you wish you could use because part of this information would be maybe Joan and I should spend some time and think about well maybe there's a really good book but you need a new activity you wish there was something else you could do um is there any one of those books you look at and go I, I, I wish we could have another lesson on that book. I wish we could learn a little bit more about that book so I could use that with my students. Mm -hmm. And somebody can share out loud. I realize we've had a lot of time. You could put something in chat. Just as, did that activity make anyone kind of think? Yeah, I, I have used... Um... And uh, not all of them, but most of them in my lessons. Yeah. And uh, my favorite one was Ambush of Tigers. Oh, it okay. was, yeah, very beautiful, very easy, easy to understand with the pictures. You know, yeah. I, I have tried many times to uh, learn by heart all these groups, but uh, it was difficult even for me. Now with the pictures, it's difficult for me and for my students. Yes. It's easy to remember with the pictures. Okay. That's beautiful book. I love it. Okay. And not also, very many, yeah, yeah, not many people have used Ambush of Tigers. Is there is there I don't know why, but the my favorite was that book. That's great. I'm glad it was useful. Yeah. Maybe if somebody yeah. wants to use it, maybe you could reach out to Diffuso a little bit and ask a question if you wanted to think if maybe looking for an idea on how she's used it. That's part of what I hope our group does together. Any other ideas? Somebody else was starting to talk, and I'll be quiet. Uh, I like to. Uh, I use the robots book uh, by National Geographic kids. Uh, I really like it. These books because uh, for our access program, uh, teen learners they really like robots. Uh, this book gives uh, the robots history and the where what. Uh, Dimension is they use robots and uh, the types of robots. So it's really fascinating for students okay. to learn okay. about uh, all the uh, robots and uh, they are, uh, for example, for humans, uh, how they are contributing. And in programs, mm -hmm. even robots playing hockey pictures, mm -hmm. they. Mm -hmm. uh, Teen learners, uh, they really get interested and involved in this okay. book. Great. Thank you. Good. Okay. Bahram, I think you were going to say something. Yes. Of course, I remember about the books that you gave us. So, uh, I used uh, in my like reading. The X one, so I I have read lots of times and uh, lots of pictures. For yeah, but ba I'm I'm having a hard time hearing you. I'm wondering if you could turn your video off, and um, that might make your voice come through a little bit better for us. Yeah, let's try again. Let's cuz I didn't understand it. I want to hear what you were saying. Was everyone else having a difficulty hearing Bahram? Was that Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's Okay, if the voice isn't coming through, maybe we can put that in the chat, Bahram. I'm sorry that that technology failed us a little bit there. Okay. All right. I also use a resume activity. Yeah, resume okay. activity. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a great way of uh, engaging the students yeah. great. in groups. Yeah. yeah. Anyone else want to share about a book they've liked, a book that they wish? Is there a book that you wish we would spend some time on to help with? Does anybody have a request? Mm -hmm. I used also most of the books. Uh, yeah. The first book was Resume. I taught 
uh, how to use this book to my teachers in ESN program, oh, okay. to my mentees. And they liked it so much that they uh, started borrowing it, this book from me That's and great. using it in, yeah, in their lessons. So oh, I liked it so great. much. And I got some problems with two books. As you can see in the poll, we haven't used two books, uh, one about sunset and one about robots. Okay. I actually don't know which activity or how to use it, okay. how to implement it. In the All right. That's great feedback. I will do some lessons on that next time. Okay. I will talk about those. Those seem to be ones that very few people have tried. Um, did, has I? We heard a little bit about robots being used with... Um, the access program, whoever used Next Time You See a Sunset, did anybody have success with that book of the two people who used it and have an idea? So I have used this book in my lesson to just to explain about sunset and the sunrise. Okay. The students yes, uh, because one of the students said that uh, what about shades? For example, we have shadow, and mm. why it's uh why it's so tall in the evening? Why it's so small in the, for example, uh, in noon at the noon, for example. But I explained to them that it's because of our sun that our earth actually, um rotates around its axe and I told them about um, the sun, the planets, and uh, their favorite book was actually about robots. Okay. So I, uh, we actually used with my students the robots that you present to us, that you give to us. And the two of my students, they, uh, they already know about coding they know about data, they know about Python and CC and some kind of lots of languages they know. Yeah. And I explained them about robots. So, and I said that the robots that I love the most is actually robotic vacuum cleaner. Ah, like the Roomba. I just like it. Yes, a robot vacuum cleaner. That's yeah. the greatest thing that uh, the humankind have ever <laughs> invented. Yeah, I'm so sad. I think so. And then, oh, thank you, <laughs> thank you. Yes, I like this. I like a vacuum cleaner. I like dishwasher. I like the things that make our lives, make actually women's lives much more easier. Oh, that's great. <laughs> thank that's you. Great. And one of them said that if women, if people have this type of robots, it make us lazy. They said yes. Makes us lazy. <laughs> Yes, I also said this. No, it doesn't make us lazy. It yeah. makes us to take some rest and to do the things that we like. For example, if uh, my dish is washed by dishwasher, I can uh, I can do classes with my children. I can, for example, read books more for example or i can do something that i like i can do my hobby that when the robot is doing something instead of me yeah great so i say these things to my students about robots that was yeah. great lesson yep yeah. yeah well we did the content conversation about shadows last time so that could be tying into sunset and mm. I actually have a content conversation for you right now that is is similar and relates to it that mm -hmm. perhaps could go with sunset if you were trying to use that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me go ahead and forward this. Okay. And so here we have just a situation about, and this is very simple. This is probably not a great one to do for... Um, high school students, because I think a high school student, but you may, it may work with el elementary and some others. Okay. Six students were walking, were talking about the sun and they had different ideas. Here is what they said. Sam said, our sun is just an average star made up of hot glowing gas. Juanita said, our sun is a huge ball of hot glowing gas. 
but it is far too close to us to be a star. Tilly said, our sun is one of the many stars found inside our solar system. Skeeter, our sun was once a planet, but now is a large burning ball. Maggie, our sun is a major star. The other stars in the sky are sparks broken off from our sun. And Diamond said, our sun is a sun. It's not a star. Suns are different than stars. Okay, so those are our options there. And since polling seems to work, I'm going to share one last poll with you. And let's see. Let me get out of... I think I have another poll available. Yes, okay. So here we go. So, do you think it's Sam? Which one of these students is true? Sam said our sun is just an average star made up of hot glowing gas. Juanita, the sun is too close to us to be a star. Tilly, our sun is one of the many stars found inside our solar system. Skeeter, our sun was once a planet, but now it is a large burning ball. Maggie, our sun is a major star. The other are sparks broken off of it. And Diamond, our sun is not a star. Suns are different from stars. And even though the science here is pretty basic, it's really, to me, an English lesson. Because there's a lot of words here that if a student doesn't understand the language, they might understand the science. They might not understand the language. So that's kind of what I like about some of these simpler content conversations, even with older students. And you can see even amongst us, four, we have four different opinions on what's true here. We've got nine answers in there, and it's okay to say you don't know. If you don't know, take a guess. That's okay. And again, this might be an interesting lead-in to when I see a sunset. Okay, because that sunset is definitely driven by our star, so we could learn a little bit about our, okay. So 11 of us, 12 of us. What's wrong with Skeeter's answer? Nobody likes Skeeter's answer. Yeah, I kind of like Our Skeeter's. sun was once a planet. <laughs> uh, Skeeter's out. We'll throw Skeeter to the side. All right. I just okay. Well, fifteen of us have answered, so I'm going to end the poll and share the results with you. You might be interested, okay? And so we'll keep it anonymous. I won't ask anybody, but let me give you the science to to back this, okay? And the science is that the sun, Sam is actually correct, okay? That our sun is just an average star made up of hot glowing gas, okay? It's close to us, but we just the fact that it's close, it, that just means it's the star that heats us. So um, that's why Juanita isn't correct. You know, the sun isn't too close to us to be a star. Okay, There are lots of stars that are close to planets. It just makes the planet so hot you can't live there. A lot of us like Tilly's answer. Our sun is one of many stars found inside our solar system. And it probably has to do with the language of inside our solar system. Because when we talk about our solar system, we're talking about the book of planets. And so our solar system basically ends at Uranus and Pluto. That's our solar system. And it's the set of planets that rotate around our star. And there are no other stars. The closest star you might remember um, at least in Ergench, we did an activity where we, we laid out kind of the solar system in the hallway there. And the nearest star was in Moscow. And so from us, you know, the nearest star to us is a star called Alpha Centauri. And if we were to fly there in a rocket, it would actually take us roughly, you know, if we flew in a rocket flying at the speed of light, which is so fast, it goes around the earth in a single second, five times it would still take us two years to get there flying at that speed. So 
there are no other stars in our solar system. And there, so there aren't any other little sparks that got broken off of it. And there is no difference between our sun and the stars, as Diamond was saying, it's just a star. So seeing kind of how this went with, with us, I'd be curious if, if you care to try this with your classes, because it's a nice quick thinking activity. I wonder if your students would, would think the same. Okay, so I'll stop sharing that. All right. Any feedback for me from that little content conversation? And, and that'll be in the slideshow that I share afterwards. Okay, it'll be in the slide deck. Okay. The answers were so clo close to each other. They were think, very close, weren't uh, they? Yeah. A little difficult for our students. Yeah, a little confusing. It, in even, even difficult for me. Yes. So definitely difficult for my students. Yeah. Yeah. But the, but the idea isn't, it's interesting. You know, I think sometimes yeah. um, we have something in, in, in America when we work with students in our science classes who don't speak English. I think sometimes we think they don't know things and what they don't know is English. They know yeah. the science, they just don't know the English. Yeah. And so I think this little content conversation is probably more of a question of English than it is science. Because one word is very important in each of those sentences. But I really like because uh, these content conversations contributes dual uh, on students' uh, retention because uh, on uh, they will develop scientific thinking yeah. and plus yeah. English. Yes, plus yeah. English. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Well, um, that's what I had for you today. I mean, we'd had the tradition of closing with our rosebud and thorn. But we're going to do a sound instead. Okay. But Joni has an idea. But okay. Also token. You want to do one word? So, so let's save that yeah. for next time. So, so Joni has something. Okay. I'm going to let Joni lead the rosebud thorn conversation. Oh, okay. Or, 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 oh, okay. We weren't, we weren't, we weren't ending yet. Okay. <laughs> So my question is just thinking about the rose, meaning something that's gone really well for you in the last two weeks, okay? And if you'd like to share a rose out loud, if you'd like to share it in chat, but just what's your success? What, what are you feeling about as you started 2023 that you're feeling good about? Anybody want to share a rose out loud? Yes, I yes. would like to. Uh, I used the book about the measurements ah. in access class. In access class, with the help of ropes, um, I did the same thing as we did uh, in your lessons. Yes. With the help of this book. So I read them, this book. I explained them about the measurements that we had or different kinds of nations had in the past. And I helped them to measure uh, themselves with the help of ropes. Then um, students uh, wrote down the results on the wall in, in a small paper and they tried to um, understand who is the tallest person and uh, they liked it so much. And it was interesting, very memorable for students, for sure. Oh, that's great to hear. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I, I see in the chat some a, 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 a rose about it's not a box. Okay. That's one of my favorites, getting students to think outside the box. Yep. I love that the measuring work. Anybody else have a rose that they'd like to share out loud or in yeah, the- Yeah, I'm, I'm also using uh, most of the activities in access classes. Mm -hmm. My favorite one is kaleidoscope, little butterflies. Oh. I have used them in many ways. And the last time I used them as, a, as an exit ticket uh, for the wrap up. For, for closing the lesson yeah That's they great. have uh, they they wrote and the new vocabulary they have learned 
they had learned and then um, they tried to remember it. Yeah, it was easy for them to make beautiful butterflies and write down uh, the new words they learned on that lesson. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Last, uh, this Monday, we use it for celebration MLK Day, Martin Luther King Day. So they use it some words on these uh, butterflies oh. for sides like peace, love, and what was Dilfusa, Dilnur, the other one is peace, love, no war, like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they express it, they are wishes to the world. Like I have a dream speech. Oh, oh that's great. What a great idea. Yeah, we sent all our pictures to US Embassy. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, thank you uh, right. for teaching this uh, oh, activity Sasha. for us. Oh, Sasha. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah. We'll let, we'll, Sasha, we'll yeah. let Sasha know. I'll go wake her up and tell her right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you. From yeah. Delfusa's words, I remembered something. Uh, once we were teaching uh, with Delfusa, some teachers. So uh, Delfusa... Uh, used uh, butterflies uh, to divide students into groups. Perfect. Uh, and I, yeah, yeah. I, I also started uh, using it. Yeah. We do it like this. So we need two types of papers. For instance, yellow and green. Yeah. They uh, must be uh, equal quality. So six greens and six yellows. We give them to students and we help them to make butterflies. And at the end, we say uh, green butterflies will be one group and yellow butterflies will be the, another group. Yeah. So it, I think Delfusa. That's great. And then um, yeah. you can also create your groups that way without them knowing it. So you can decide who's this color yeah, yeah. butterfly and I difficult see. students, you can kind of divide the clicks or the friendships and get to meet new people. So it's a, I, I did it with your groups at times. I could decide if I handed you which animal or what color thing to, that would naturally divide you, you would think I could group you yeah. without you knowing uh -huh. it. You can do that with your students. Yeah. Perfect. Uh -huh. We did it the same way. We didn't tell them that we are dividing them into groups. Yeah. We just handed them the papers. Yeah. And at the end, we told them that they are groups. Perfect. Okay. All right. So how about the thorn? Is there anything out there that you're like, oh, this is this. I'm, I'm trying it. It's, it's not working. I've got this struggle going. I haven't got it figured out yet. How about the thorn? Anybody got something like that they want to share? Something because that may be something that I we've heard about a couple books that we're going to help you with. But what else could we help you with? What's 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 the thorn in 2023? If there are more lessons about the robots, that would be great. Okay. Yeah. And about my robot and me, we are not understanding each other. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yep. It, it doesn't follow my rules. I don't oh. know. I don't know what's the problem, but I'm having a difficult okay. time with okay. my robot. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let me let me do a quick poll on that. I'm I'm curious. Um because I kind of expected that. Um just a quick question. Have you tried to use your robot with students? And it's okay to say not yet. That's a perfectly good answer to say, haven't tried it yet. All right. Looks like most of us have tried. Yes, in fact, that's my point. All right. Okay, so little little more than half of us have. Okay, all right. I'm going to share the results with you right there. 
so that you can know that you've got company on both sides, lots of people. But from the 11 people who have tried it, okay, so 11 have tried and five haven't. Um, of those of you who tried it, would anybody share? Would anybody call it a bud? Would anybody call it a real success? And what did you do? Showed it to the ninth grades. Okay. I see some folks. Hi. Hi, Mr. Allen. Yes. Uh, my, uh, I'm, my, now, my radio isn't working well because I'm on the street now. Okay. And uh, I use it, I showed it to the ninth grade. And they are really interested in these robotics. And uh, they ask us so many questions like the, how it can work and uh, how do you use it uh, for your lessons. They ask so many questions and the interest, they, they like it very much. And I showed it them to the racing like the clapping ones, and uh, they uh, all practice it, the clap. Great. Uh, yeah. You. And that was great. All right. Well, that sounds like uh, a success. That definitely sounds like a bud that built some engagement. Yeah. yeah. Yuck, yuck, yuck. <laughs> hey, the we... are to me. Where okay. are you in the in the evening? Yes. Okay. We've we've now had a participant from a wedding. Yes. And we now have our on the street participant. Great. <laughs> we are we are we are everywhere. Kind of Zoom. I love that. Okay. All right. And it's drill. He's chilling out now. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, cool. Any other ideas people wanted to share about their robot and how they've been able to use it? Knowing it's just one yeah. robot. Yeah, I've used for the first grade students and the ninth and the eighth grade students. And the, among them, the first grade students was uh, were curious about using how to use this robot and even uh, at the end of the lesson uh, they uh, they all try to use them themselves you know yeah and also the eighth grade students were to uh, try try to to make themselves uh, like to make themselves like this kind of robots, you know, for their creation, they, they try to create themselves, you know. Yeah. I, I think I can encourage them to uh, to create new things, new robots to, you know, to ease our life. And that was uh, very fun to use. Uh, like, uh, uh, I used the, with the clubs and flashlights and also you know the the turns the, uh, itself, and yeah. that was uh, full of fun. Great, all right, that's great, Sakharov. All right, and, and let me, Mr. Allen. Yes, we'll look back. Good evening and good morning for you. And uh, sorry, we are light of uh, electricity yeah. switch off now and. Uh, I want to say about robotics that I recently used it uh, in my class. That is uh, to show that uh, what is uh, uh, executable coding. Mm. And I tried some uh, codes and write it and, and perform in the robots. But I am not have a uh, chance to give uh, tasks for students and uh, write some uh, programming code. And after that, we will be uh, write it's the coding to the robot and perform uh, how it will be do that uh, it is performed as the uh, writing 
in code. Uh, I don't have a chance to it, but I will plan uh, to do it. And maybe in when I uh, our classes start. But uh, I must say that uh, this robot is useful to show students that how uh, sensors include to the uh, boarding. Yes. Because it has some uh, sensors, uh, five sensors, I like, uh, I think that uh, because uh, when we're uh, coding, we need some sensors because uh, just not only the coding, uh, it uses some, something. And it's also good tools to to show, to demonstrate that uh, with sensor and code, there's join. Yeah, great explanation. You're you're talking exactly what I'm teaching to my seventh and eighth graders here right now in Vermont as they learn sensors and how to embed it in the code. Yeah. So yeah. I'll I'll do some thinking about how to kind of share some of that, and we'll share that in two weeks. I'll I, I definitely hear mm -hmm. the message that a bud would be, um, a, a bud a bud some of you would like to have would be new ideas for the robots. So, yep, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you for the sharing from everyone. Is there anyone else who has, I kind of feel like we've shifted from thorn to bud a little bit and talked opportunity, but does anyone have something coming up that they're super excited about trying? That would be my bud. I really like it, how uh, you attractively re do read aloud this and content conversations. Even I indicated it in my PhD. <laughs> yes, yep. and, and you that's... are part of my PhD, Mr. Allen. So... Well, great. I think yeah, that's thank you. I, that's that's thank you very that much. We're, yeah. we're soon going to be talking to Dr. Feruza, right? <laughs> <laughs> Inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you. All right. Anybody else have something exciting coming up? A bud that they're excited about in the next couple of weeks? Something they want to try. Um, uh, I would like to thank for all your um, activities that you have taught us. And I also tried to make butterflies with my students. Oh. And um, they learned how to get instructions and how to follow the instructions. And besides, I also divided them into three groups. And I called only the leaders as you did yes mm -hmm. and the leaders i have explained it to the leaders and leaders explained into the groups and it was really um engaging i would like to say the activity for my students they they learned a lot and it was really very um interesting for them also how to make butterflies and robotics i also use robotics and i showed them to the 10th and 9th grade students and um, uh, I showed them how to code and uh, uh, how to robot uh, followed to the torch, yes, to the light of the torch and they were really surprised and they also tried to make it. It was um, very interesting and engaging activity for them also. Thank you very much. Oh, that sounds like some great sharing. I, I love to hear about kids getting engaged. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Thanks a lot. All right. Okay. Hi, Mr. Allen, John. Hey. I also like to mention that as your reading strategy, I really I use it also, like you interesting. And I ask some questions about the topic, what are they are thinking about and what it can be next. And it was very interesting. And mostly challenging thing is with robots. Okay. <laughs> we have some information. Little information about robots, and uh, I think we read more about robots. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. For Thank that you. Sharing. 
All right. Any other sharing before we wrap up? I just put a link in the chat. This is the same link I shared last time. So when I'm done here, I'll take the Zoom. I'll take the links. You'll be able to find everything there. I'll put a link to the PowerPoint, to the book about the dot. If you'd like to do that, the content conversation will be there. Um, so that's the place we can always go back to and get things. Okay. And I'll come prepared with a robot lesson next time. I'll, I'll build on that a little bit and think about what are some ways that I can help you in, engage with your robot a little more. Probably a, probably a slide deck that'll kind of walk through some things that you could use with your students thinking. And I'll keep in mind you have one robot. I, I will remember that. All right. Okay. Well, Joni has a wrap up for us. So, you know how we all have like time to end our session together and um you know at certain schools it might be a bell it might be a different sound or things so i think for today we'll do a soft sound ending to our session are you ready yes <laughs> this session is now closed it's officially <laughs> close i think we should wake up to this alan we, and then we, we won't wake, be late then the we won't be one. late for the next one yeah all right well thank you for your patience we're sorry we kept you oh. waiting a little bit all right if anybody has thank, a question thank you very much thank you but we're officially done you can sign off but we'll hang here for a minute or two just in case anybody has a last minute question thank you thank you Elizabeth. Muckman, I will reach out to you. We'll connect. Thank you Enjoy very much. Yes. Thanks a lot, Mr. and Mrs. Miller. Thank you very much. Bye -bye. Thank you very much. Have Thank a good day. So Have a great Have a day. day. Yes. Enjoy yes. your time in the U.S. All right. Yes. In tech. I think yeah. that. I think he's still in. All right. Now, do you have, can you, can you get rid of it? Yes. Okay. That's why I grabbed. Right. That's it. Zoop, 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 zoop. <laughs>